I thought I'd change up the scene a little bit, allow some of that outdoor natural light to come in. I have my Godox right over here to balance it out so I'm able to get the inside outside look. We're gonna continue part two of this color grading process uh, and I wanted to share with you like how I would go about grading uh, footage that I've shot. I have three clips here on my timeline and I'll show you how I would typically grade this uh, and then you know this is what I'll deliver to a client. So let's jump into DaVinci and show you the process. So here are the three pieces of footage. I've already done some grading here on this specific footage. I'll do a before and then after. So before, after. So before, this is C-Log3 Cinema Gamut uh, footage and I was shooting quite wide open. As you can see, there's quite a bit of blur. I was using a variable ND filter so that I'm able to actually capture this footage. In terms of my grade here, I started with an exposure node, a white balance node, a conversion node, and then a split tone node. Here, like I do a little bit of my coloring and then the other nodes, the exposure is to obviously manage my exposure if I'm too overexposed. White balance is if I'm, my white balance is a little bit off, I can shift it back a little bit. And in terms of my conversion node, I'm actually using the Canon Phantom RE LUTs uh, to do this conversion for this specific tutorial. Okay, so I'll share other tutorials whereby I'll use different methods. So I will start it from scratch here so you can actually see the process. So I'll select a reset here and then let's build it out. So one, two, three, four no nodes. And then here I'll label it exposure. The next one, let's label that white balance. And then here I'll do convert which refers to conversion because the the LUT that I'm using is actually it's a conversion with a creative LUT embedded into it and I'll show you exactly what I mean and then the final one is split tone so let's start it off with the conversion LUT so over here I have all of these different um, kind of looks and feels so I'll go with the neutral Canon log here and this is what it does to the footage and I'll switch around so you can check it out. So tungsten changes the colors a bit. Utopia changes the color a little bit. Jamaica and so forth and so on. So let's go with neutral. And then what I wanna do right now is reduce the exposure. As you can see the footage is a little bit overexposed. And you know, you will share with me. I always thought that with C-Log3, you have to shoot it with like one stop overexposed to be able to get some of that uh, detail and reduce the noise and the shadows. But the only problem is that it always comes out a bit overexposed. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. You can share with me in the comments below. So over here, what I want to do with the exposure node is actually go into the color space. Uh, first of all, go into HDR and then jump into the color space and select Canon Cinema Gamut and then drop to Gamma and then select Canon Log3. The reason I'm doing this and using HDR is that I found out uh, from a tutorial that this it's the best way you can be able to work with your exposure instead of actually managing it through the HD, the you know primary uh, color wheels. So over here, I'm going to reduce the exposure in the global tab over here, global wheel per se, and then I drop it down. As you can see, it reduces it quite well. I love this way of working with exposure, uh, and then I'll reduce a little bit in terms of the highlights over here, so I can drop those highlights as well. And the cool thing about the HDR tab is that you can go into specific areas of your footage so shadows light highlights specular and blacks as well and darks so i like to work in this format when it comes to exposure so i've exposed it properly now i like how it looks in terms of the white balance i will go back to the primary color wheels and i'll bring in a little bit of that warmth into this footage it was early morning and i'll bring in a bit of magenta into this shot just a little bit um, Here's a before and after, just very subtle change. In terms of split tone, this is where I'm gonna go back into the primary wheels as, as well, and then I'll adjust the gains, maybe trying to get a little bit of that uh, warmer highlights and cooler uh, shadows. So I'll bring up a little bit of these uh, warmth in the gain over here. And in terms of the lips, I'll drop them down just a little bit uh, towards the green and blue side of things so if we go into let's say 100 over here 
able to do a before and then an after. It's very subtle, nothing too crazy. So let's look at how the footage looked before. So this is before and then after. I'll click it wide open so you can check it out. So this is how it looks. And then I will kind of sift through the uh, Phantom LUT so you can see how it would look like. I think at the beginning you couldn't really tell the difference. So let's try tungsten. So you can see there's a bit of uh, greenish tones in the, in the hands there. Utopia, Jamaica, a bit more on the, you know, brownish, greenish side of things, ice blue, you, just like the name. So we'll go with the neutral. I like how it, you know, represents this footage and it makes me feel like the magenta is a bit too much. So I'll bring it back and I'll also bring some warmth into this footage. And this is what I'll end with. I'm tweaking it as we go actually as well here. Let me bring up a little bit of that exposure in the light section. So we get a bit of that contrast and I'm happy with that. So for example, if you did want to add a bit more contrast, I would create another node here. I'll label it contrast and I'll go into the primary wheels and I'll bring up the, the contrast dial over here. I can play with the pivot as well, bring it up or down, I think just about there is fine. So before, after, we get a bit of that contrast in the scene. Okay, so I will copy these into this other footage. So Command C and then I'll paste it. As you can see here, now we will have to adjust a little bit of the exposure. We'll go back to the HDR wheel and I'll drop the exposure in the global tab uh, just to get the, the right balance of what I'm kind of like aiming for. And then in the white balance, I feel like this is a bit too green. I'll bring it into the magenta side of things, just about there. Uh, and I'm happy with that before, after. We might even have to tweak it a little bit in the split tone. Let's go to the primary wheels here. And I might have to bring up the, the kind of the shadows into more of a browner tone. I didn't like it looking a bit on the blue greenish side of things. So I'm happy with that now. So I'll copy this and then paste it on this final footage. I'll bring up the exposure for this one in the global tab and then also maybe bring it up in the shadows. I feel like it's a bit too dark. Uh, and what I can also do is just go to the contrast tab and then maybe switch this off because I feel like there's too much contrast here. So be, this is after and then this is before. I'm happy with that. And maybe just drop down the warmth in this particular shot just around there. And then I'm happy with that. So before and then after. Okay, let's select all the clips together and then I'll just look at them to see like how it actually looks. I'm, I'm happy with that. I think even in that first scene initially, it's a bit bright just because of the hand being in the area where the light is hitting. And then right over here, everything kind of looks uniform. Uh, so that's basically like how I'll go about grading footage like this and then you know sending out to a client this is one of the methods uh, that i would use in this situation i use the phantom LUTs. Uh, i really love the outcome that they create uh, when you're using them for the canon c log 3 uh, footage you can definitely check them out uh, you do have to buy them so the next tutorial that i share is going to be with using the actual uh, film looks that you get in da vinci which are free and uh, that's it for me today. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, do comment down below and I'll answer them for you in terms of the process. I had to figure all these things out and I think the method that worked with me was that I just jumped into DaVinci and I bought some power grades and I started to deconstruct those power grades and figuring things out. Definitely took me a little bit longer to learn. I think uh, maybe four or five months just to try to figure things out. And I think like I'm starting to get it um, to the point whereby I'm able to change the things that I want to change and not be stuck. So I'm happy with it. If you have any questions and you have any suggestions for future videos, just comment down below and I'll work on those. Thank you for tuning in on to this part two of how to color grade. I'll see you on another one. Peace out.